ready? Good morning, everybody. The word simply says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we welcome you into this place. We welcome you into our hearts, our mind, and our consciousness. I will pray that something that we say or do will uplift and glorify your name and compel someone to say, what must I do to be saved, to become a member of your family? And we ask all these blessings in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I will now turn it over to our anointed soloist. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we give God some praise in this place? We could do a little bit better than that. We can give God some praise because he didn't have to wake us up this morning. He didn't have to bring us this far. He didn't have to let you see another day. He didn't have to put the clothes on our back. And for that very reason, we are grateful that he did. Come on, stand to your feet if you will. As we begin to give God some praise, I need you to open up your mouth. Don't clap your hands, just open up your mouth and give God the praise that he's due this morning. He's been better than good to me. Somebody ought to look at your neighbor and say, he's been better than good to me. He's been better than good to me. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And I'm so very grateful, God, for your faithfulness, for your grace, for your mercy, God. You're worthy. You're worthy, worthy, worthy. You're worthy, worthy, worthy. You've been better than good to me. Hey, has he been good to anybody in here? I mean, I mean, I don't, don't, don't fool me. Just so good that you can't even tell it all. I know it's some things that I know I don't deserve, but he keeps on making ways and he keeps on forgiving us over and over and over again. He's been better than good to me. Hey, he's been so very good to me. And we love you, Lord, and we give you glory, Lord, and we give you honor, Jesus, and we give you the praise. You've been better than good to me, yeah. Woo. I don't know about y'all. Y'all ain't woke up yet, but I've been up since in the 5 o'clock hour, and I've been worshiping since my feet hit the floor because he's been so good. He's been better than, better than, better than good to me. I got so many reasons to thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's been so good to me. And we love you, Lord. We love to call on the name of Jesus. How many of you, when you in trouble, you try calling on a family member? Just be honest. They don't always answer, do they? But how many of you know and you believe that when you call on the name of Jesus, demons tremble things begin to happen he always answers and that's why i love calling on his name hallelujah hey, yeah. i'm gonna call on y'all to help me sing this morning if you will Jesus, 
victorious. I have the victory. When I call on your name, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, I have the victory. So if you really know that you are victorious this morning, come on, open your mouth and begin to say that I have.
but the atmosphere is being charged. The ground is being tilled for your leader to come and impart into you. In order for that to happen and for you to receive in faith, you have to let go of the things that are weighing you down. There's a heaviness that has to go. When demons tremble, when we call on the name of Jesus, demons have to tremble. When we call on the name of Jesus, fear has to be expelled. When we call on the name of Jesus, everything has to go. What your mind is thinking, everything has to be expelled. When we call on the name Jesus, When we call on the name Jesus, when we call on the name Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, El Elyon, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, yes he is. Amen. Are you excited to be in God's house on today? Come on, don't fool me. Don't fool me. Amen. Anyone visiting with us for the first time? Amen. Keep, keep your hands up. Let me see. Let me see. Amen. Who invited you? Who is that, Sister Dree? All right. Who invited you all? Kelly? 
Okay, Sister Barbara. Any, anyone over here? Oh, just the right side? All right, Sister Dre, here you go. You gonna send your husband or you gonna come? All right, Sister Kelly, here you go. Who else it was? Here you go, Sister Max. How about you? You all right? I forgot your birthday, so you made sure you raise your hand. <laughs> hey, Amen. Thank you so much to all of our first-time visitors. We appreciate you being here. Our service is at all, has already been enhanced just by your mere presence. There's only one favor we ask of you, that you don't make this your last time coming. Amen. Amen. Can we bless God one more time? Y'all ready for the word? Y'all sure? That's what y'all came for? Well, I guess I'll give you the word. Huh? We good, honey? We ain't did offering yet? We have it? Got some folk ready to give. That's when you have grown. Amen. That's when you have grown. It's important to understand that giving is still a part of worship. Amen. See, see, it get quiet around this time when you. But what I've learned is, there's certain principles that you can apply to your life. Doesn't matter where you are. You apply certain principles, you reap the benefits of those principles. Here's what the Word of God says He says, Give, and it shall be given back unto you. He also said that if you give, I will give you grace. Your giving also puts you in a position to receive grace. He says, If you give, I will make all grace abound towards you, that you will have all sufficiency and all things, and that you're able to give to every good work. He also says, watch this, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. This is the good part. He says, I love a cheerful giver. I'm just like the Lord. If you're not excited about giving, then why give it? Yeah. Yeah. So when you talk about giving rather than being sad, you ought to be appreciative and grateful that you have an opportunity to sow seed. He says, I give seed to the sower. So how many of you want to be sowers? Yeah, that's been my prayer. Lord, make me the sower. Yeah, because he says he gives seed to the sower. And if you're a sower, you always have. Amen. Yeah, y'all get it. Y'all get it. Y'all get it. And so at this opportunity you have to give, Give with a spirit of expectation. Never sow without expecting. He says if you give, you can expect. Because now I put a seed in the ground. And if because I put a seed in the ground, I can expect a harvest based on a seed. Many times people are not reaping because they are not sowers. They expect something from God, but they never trust God to sow anything. Oh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. I've learned in my life that no matter how much I give, I can never be God's giver. Yeah, amen. So lift those seeds to all of our visitors. Thank you so much for being here. You're not obligated to give anything. If you're a giver and you want to sow, God bless you. But we, you're not obligated to give. We have faithful givers here at this ministry. Amen. Father, we thank you for every seed that is being sown on today. God, we realize that every good and every perfect gift come from above. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to give back unto you. We know giving unto you is a part of sowing into this ministry. And, God, we know that you said you would make all grace abound towards us, that we would have all sufficiencies and all things, and that we're able to give to every good work. I pray, God, that everyone that's sowing on today would not lack because of the seed that they're sowing. I speak increase. I speak abundance. I speak overflow. I speak more than enough in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Please be so kind as the offering basket comes your way.
that you would drop your offering in. Amen. Just and ever and ever for all you've done. Yeah, personal for me. How many of you want to receive blessings? Blessings and glory and honor. They all. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you so much once again for the seeds that you've sown. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not lack anything, but God will cause all grace to abound towards you. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for our guest psalmist on today. Can you bless God for our sister, Sister Ava? Look, I got to get used to it. It's not McCoy. It's Ava White now. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you still got the Mac in there. Yeah, but it, it's White now. Congratulations again. Um, you know, it's been a few years now, but we thank God for you being here. You've always been a blessing to us. So I want you to put your hands together. Make her feel real special and welcome. Hey man, you got one more for us? You got one more for us? Give us one more. Give us one more. Come on, let me get that mic. I, I didn't get a chance to hear you. I'm, I want to hear you. anybody know that you are who you are today because God used every one of those mistakes that we've made even the ones that we thought weren't mistakes even the ones that we thought he didn't see but he takes those things in spite of us and he turns them into testimony and he uses them for your good even though you don't see it right now even though you may feel like you're stuck. How many of you sometimes you've ever felt, you've ever felt stuck? Like you just couldn't get one foot in front of the other. I can be honest and say that I have. But God doesn't see that. He sees it, but he does not hold that against us. All you have to do is repent and believe that it's already done, that God is going to do just what he said in his word. I am who I am today because God used my mistakes. He worked him for my good like no
because God used every one of my mistakes and he turned it around for my good, yeah. Just like no one ever could. And it's for your glory, God, yeah. I know it was for my good. I know it was for my good, yeah. Everything that I ever experienced, God, I know it was for my good. Every failure, every door closed, every door closed, every no, every no, he turned it to yes. It was for my good. It was for my miss the opportunity to give God his yes. Don't miss an opportunity to give God his yes. Mm. Will your heart say yes to him this morning? Will your spirit say yes to him? Yes to your will. No matter what you did yesterday, he's not looking at that. He's not going to hold that against you. Man will put our sins on the screen right here. But God, but God, he's so gracious. He's so forgiving. Whew. I, I don't know about y'all, God, but I know the one that I serve. Hallelujah. I know the one that I serve. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah.
something, something about that song that does something to me. You are who you are today. The truth is, some of us don't deserve to be here today. All the mistakes you've made, all the mistakes I've made, all the places and positions we put ourselves in when we could have easily lost our lives but yet we're still here today. See, that's enough to give God some praise right there. Yeah. Maybe y'all been good all your lives. Maybe y'all got it all figured out. But I'm grateful and thankful that God didn't hold my mistakes against me. Oh, Lord, where would I be? Father, we bless you. Thank you for being a loving God. Thank you for looking beyond our faults. Thank you for meeting our needs. God, we thank you for this moment, this time. God, I pray now that the hearts of your people are positioned to receive from you. I bind the hand of the enemy now. Every hindrance, every foul spirit that's not of you, that would try to hinder the flow of your spirit, we cast down and out in Jesus' name. I pray even now that self decrease, that you may increase, that your word would go forth today with power and authority. And God will be forever mindful to give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give it up one more time for the king. I said for the king. Hallelujah. Can you bless God also for the ministry gift of our dear sister, Sister Ava White? We bless and thank God for you. Amen. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Bible reads, then Elisha said, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a measure of fine flour will be sold for a shekel of two measure of barley for a shekel and the gate of Samaria. The royal officer on whose hand the king was leaning responded to the man of God and said, even if the Lord were to make windows in heaven, could this thing happen? Then he said, Behold, you are going to see it with your own eyes, but you would not eat any of it. Now there were four leopard men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? Why? Are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, then the famine is in the city and we will die there. But if we sit here, we will also die. Just for a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject, Fate to Live in Dying Times. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Fate, fate to live in dying time. First of all, I just want to get this barrier, this heavy spirit that I'm sensing in the place. I don't know what's weighing you down or what's even on your mind. But we have to learn how to enter into God's gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Because whatever you're going through will remain if you don't learn how to release. The days of us entering to the house of worship 
and not worshiping must cease. Because the question begins to come to mind, why did I come? What was the purpose? It's not like going to a game. See, folk excited when they go get entertained. But the house of worship is not for entertainment. It's a place where we can come and get empowered. Where we can come and release and leave things. Whatever it was I was dealing with before I came through those doors, I'm ready to get rid of. This weight that you are carrying, the weight of the world that's being applied to your life is too much for you. And whenever we can get in the presence of God, I don't know about you, but I love it. How good and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together. When you have people with one mind in one place on one accord, the atmosphere has been set for miracles. See, we miss opportunities for miracles because we come here and we sit and we watch. We want to be entertained. I come against that spirit. I come to lift up Jesus. He said if he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. So we have to learn how to lift up Jesus. The problem is we're lifting up our issues, our circumstances, and we're making them bigger than God. And now it's hard for you to see God even when he's present. It kind of reminds me of the text. Some of us are sitting in a place and we don't know what to do. The Bible says there were four leopards. They had issues. They was dealing with a grave element, an ailment. They were outcasts. Nobody wanted to be around them because of their issue. Have you ever been dealing with an issue and it seems like no one wants to be around? The truth is, they couldn't hide their issue. But we put masks on every Sunday, every Monday, every Tuesday. We hide our issues. But there's one person that you can never hide your issue from. And that's God because he sees. He sees beyond the mask. He sees beyond the mascara. He sees beyond the suit. He sees beyond all that stuff. And he knows your secrets. Secret pain that you're dealing with. The secret hurt that you have in your heart. Which hinders you from praising him because you're so focused on what you're experiencing. Not understanding that God can change your situation if you learn how to release. I am who I am today. Kind of reminds me of Abraham. All that he did, he was a dreamer. I'm going off script, but it ain't about the script. He was a dreamer. And because he shared his dream, folk wanted to kill him. Because he was willing to look beyond his present circumstance, his family even wanted to kill him. Sold him out. Left him for dead. Gets out of the pit. Goes to a Potiphar's house. Wife tried to sleep with him. He denounced her. Get thrown into prison. Interprets a dream. Now he's out of prison, and then now he's in the position next to the king. And now his brothers come to him and don't even recognize him. See, God would allow you to go through some things. And it looks like it's bad what you're going through. It looks like you'll never come out of what you're going through, but it's working for your good. Yeah, all that stuff that you're experiencing right now that looks like I won't get out of this, I don't know how I'm going to get out of it, it's working for your good. All the people who misused you, mistreated you, did things despitefully against you, God says it's working. It's not even about the people, it's more so about what God is doing. Oh, 
y'all miss it. So the opportunity came for payback. And Abraham said, am I God to repay you all? He said, y'all meant it for evil. But God meant it for my good. Everything that you thought you was doing to hurt me was actually helping me, and it was pushing me closely to my purpose. That's when you can say, I am who I am today. Every attempt, every attack, every false accusation, it was working for my good. <laughs> I would not have gotten to where I am today if you would not have betrayed me. But here's the key. He forgave. He was willing to forgive them. Many of us in the room today Unforgiveness is a barrier that's keeping us from shifting into where God desires. You're holding on to stuff. You won't let him go. You're holding on to what she done to you. And you won't let her go. Not even understanding that it's not hurting that person, it's hindering you. They've moved on with life, but you're stuck. The Bible says the four lepers were stuck in a place where they had to make a decision. You're in a place today where you're going to have to make a decision. Do I stay in the state that I'm in? Or, I, or in spite of where I am, I not allow it to hinder me from where God is trying to take me. And I make a decision that in the face of adversity, I'm still going to push forward. I'm going to push forward. See, it takes faith to do that. Faith is not just a now, it's a verb. It's action. Because you can tell me you have faith, but if there's no action behind what you say, then I don't know. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So you can tell me how much faith you have, but if there's no action behind what you say you believe, then I question what you believe. This world that we live in is a dying world. And everything that has been pushed upon us, if it's not the word of God, we're receiving from dying people. Everything that's been pushed our way, and if you're not careful, even that weight that's being applied to you will start bringing you down. That's why you have to be careful who you're around. People will weigh you down with unbelief. Weigh you down with doubt. One of the lepers, there was four, but at least one of them had enough sense to say, man, look. <laughs> we already died. There's a famine in the land. There's food over there. We're outside the gate about to starve to death, but we know where food is. So you have to make a decision. Are we going to stay out here and die? Or are we going to take a chance where we know food is? See, that's faith. Faith is what you don't see. But I believe. I told you on last week, the problem is we only go after what we see. 
If I see it, I believe it. But that's not faith. Hebrews chapter 11 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And Hebrews chapter 6 goes on to say, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hell is throwing a party, and we're entertaining it. It got us looking like everything is good, but people are on their way to a dangerous place and don't even know it. There's an attraction, my brothers and sisters, that the world is presenting to us. And if we're not careful, we're going to entertain it. The truth is, some of us are entertaining it even now. And it makes it hard to even decipher between what's true and what's not. Because we've been fed a lie so long. And now when the truth comes, it's hard to see whether it's true or not. The violent take it by force. Are you willing to take it by force? Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone? Are you willing to make the shift that Holy Spirit has already made? Or are you willing to stay in your state? Here's what I want you to hear. The Bible says the word of the Lord came to Elisha. See, when you're living in a dying world, you have to be willing first to hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Not the, not, not the word of the world. Because the world is constantly feeding us advertisement. Giving us all kind of stuff that is not really true. It's false. But because we eat so much of false stuff, it's hard for us to accept the truth. There's only one truth. And it's found in the word of God. Now you even have people that's trying to contradict the word of God to tell you that it's not fact. That there's no truth in the word because if the white man wrote it, then it's the white man's Bible. This word is the only thing that has withstood the test of time. I've had people tell me stuff, promise me stuff, and they could not hold it. The only thing that's been promising to me and sure for me has been the word of God. Here's what he said, Isaiah chapter 40, he, verse 8, he says, the grass withered. The flower faded. <laughs> but the word of God will remain forever. It never changes. Seasons change, times change, people change. But the only thing that's been sure for me in my life is the word of God. It never changed. It never loses. It remains the same. So when the word comes, that's what Elisha said, the word of the Lord came. And he began to prophesy what was about to happen. We're living in some dire times, my brothers and sisters. I don't know if you know it or not, but this world has shifted. See, we're only caught up in our present. But there are some cities that are struggling to even get water right now. Their supply has dried up. And we already know, we experience some of it now, prices of gas has gone up and down. You have to choose whether I'm going to get gas in my car or feed my baby. But when you hear the word of the Lord and he reminds you of these things, you're not troubled. See, the word of God has been telling us what was going to happen. But when you're not in tune with the word and then things start happening, we're surprised. And I'm trying to figure out how are children of God, how are people of God surprised by what they see when the word has already spoken what will happen living in dire times, like a famine like they had. A famine where they already couldn't be around people because they had leprosy. 
they were exposed of their ailment because of their ailment. You can't hide that. See, there are many folk walking around sick and you don't even know they sick. Truth is, we're getting advice from sick folk. And when I say sickness, I'm not talking about an ailment. Some folk are just sin sick. And they're trying to give you advice from a sin sick place. Leprosy. When they would come around people, they would holler out, leper. A leper. Folk would try to excommunicate themselves from them. Nobody wanted to be around a leper because they was considered unclean. What if many of us are dealing with spiritual leprosy and we're wondering why people are not around us? Could it be that we're giving off false signals? presenting ourselves to be one way but in essence we're not even that looking like a fig tree but you only have leaves looking good from a distance but as close as people get to you they find out that it's not what I saw y'all quiet in this Christian church that's the danger my brothers and sisters we have to be careful that we're not presenting ourselves to be something that we're really not and the more people around us, we're being exposed, and we're thinking we're exposing people, but the truth is we're being exposed. Because if you don't have word in you, with all that's being thrown at us, if you don't have the word of God in you, you're going to be swayed, easily moved, easily enticed, drawn away. And that's what the world wants. Everything's good. It's good. It's okay. Not what the word says, but if you can do what you want. It's your decision. You can live how you want. It's your thing. But when you read the word of God, you see the opposite. Know ye not that you're not your own? That you've been bought with a price? So therefore, you're supposed to, I'm supposed to glorify God in my body and spirit, which is his. See, that's word. We don't like that because it challenges us. When you don't want to do right, you, you definitely don't want to hear. When you want to do wrong, you definitely don't want to hear right. So that's when compromise come in. So now we justify why we do certain things. There's no justification. Faith cometh by and hearing by the word of God. How often do you hear the word? I'm not talking about Sundays. See, because here's what I've learned. I don't need a preacher to preach to me. I study to show myself approved. So I don't have to wait till I get to Sunday to get a word. I live the word. I am the word. The word is in me. Should be. But if you're not hearing the word, what's provoking you? What's leading you? Because three things happen. You should learn, you should lead, and you should lean on the word. See, you can lean on the word because it's sure. You can lean means to trust in the word. You can trust in the word because it never changes. Romans 10 and 17 says, so faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Hearing. Not heard. Hearing. Constant. Consistency. See, we're consistent with other stuff more than we're consistent with hearing. The word of God. The more you hear the word, the more it builds up your faith. 
So when you're going through stuff, you hear the word, and the more you hear the word, it starts encouraging you. It's increasing your faith. And then now what you were going through don't really take place for what you've heard. And now I hear it. And I keep reading it. I keep hearing it. And now it increases my faith that I'm no longer thinking about what I'm going through, but I believe what he said. Living by the word means also that I learn from the word. Psalms 119, 105 says, your word, Lord, is a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my pathway. Psalms 119 and 130 says, the entrance of your word give it life. And it gives understanding to the simple. See, the word brings understanding. So when things are going on in your life, you can pray to God and he'll give you the word and give you understanding of what's really happening. And also give you assurance that what you're going through won't kill you. Because the enemy will have you thinking what you're in and what you're going through right now, there's no way out. You won't make it out of this. And it's funny because we've been in stuff before. And God brought you out. How many trials have you experienced? Oh, we can have a testimony service. How many things you've gone through and then think you can make it out of, and truth be told, you thought you can come out of it, and you're still here today? Why? God's grace. text says the royal officer on whom the king was leaning responded to the man of God and said even if the Lord were to make windows in heaven could this thing happen? Could this thing really happen? See what's impossible to man is possible for God. The problem is we've allowed our experiences that we've had to dictate us the possibilities of God. With man, it can be impossible. But all things are possible to those who believe. Do you believe it can happen? And he's telling this man of God, by this time tomorrow, it looks bad, but it's about to change. Where there was lack, it's about to be plenty. See, there's a famine don't last long. The truth be told, if you're a child of God, you can be in a famine and never experience it. I, I know, I know what I'm talking about. When other folk crying, talking about how high to get, I still fill up. I, I haven't ran out of gas yet. So what other folk are complaining about, it makes me look and count. I don't have time to complain. I'm too busy thanking him <laughs> for being good. So it doesn't mean that it's not a famine or it's not tough times, but when you trust God, when he's your source, come on now, gas is a resource. He created that too. He's a source that never runs out. So now, the man of God is saying, this time tomorrow, even though it's been a famine, you're going to be able to buy, look, you're going to be able to buy this stuff like, like you at the flea market. <laughs> this stuff going to come cheap, cheap. I ain't talking about knockoff either. I'm talking about said, you're going to be able to get this stuff penny on a dollar, like Grover Shop, penny on a dollar. <laughs> Looking for sale. That's G. That's G. He looked for sale. He took, called me. Pastor, they got to sell that dealer, Pastor. They got to sell. <laughs> it's the good stuff, Pastor. It ain't the bad stuff, man. <laughs> he was letting them know that a famine has been, but it won't stay. He says, now God is going to open up the windows of heaven now and going to start pouring out. And here's what the man of God says, could that really happen? Have you ever shared something with folk and then their unbelief caused you to almost? <laughs> you know what God said to you. And then you share it with them and now they got you. Oh, no. 
he says, here's what he says. It's going to happen. You're going to see it happen. And you won't even be able to partake of it. Boy, kind of reminds me of Moses. When God calls him, allowed him to lead the children of Israel out in Numbers chapter 20, he calls him to lead the children of Israel out. And God told him early on that that, that, that was going to come up on a rock and, and, and the rock was going to get water out of it. It's going to have water to come out of it. But he told him the first time, he says, he says, strike the rock. Y'all remember that? He struck the rock and water came out, right? And the next time they come, they feel you know, people complaining and murmuring again. Lord, you, you brought us out here. We're in the desert. We thirsty again. So the Lord sees the rock and he tells Moses this time, this time. See, you're so accustomed to, to God doing things the same way that you've been. And God is trying to get you to see that I'm not doing it that way no more. I've shifted, but you're so stuck in your way. Because you're comfortable in the way it's been. When God says that no longer works for where I'm taking you. Uh-huh. And so now with your prideful self, he says, Moses, no, not this time. I don't need you to strike it. I need you to speak to it. See, humility is so important to the next shift. Moses got caught up in the people. That's why I be tripping. Y'all ain't going to get me messed up. <laughs> I'm going to say what he tell me to say. I'm going to do what he tell me to do. You don't have to agree because I'm going to see it. And not only am I going to see it, I'm going to partake of it. Moses get the big head and go tell the people, why much I fetch you rebels water? He called the people rebels. <laughs> see, black trade won't say rebels. They'll call them something else. That bothers me when I hear that. You, these God's people, I don't care what you think of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't care what you think of them. They're still God's people. So you got to be careful what you say. He won't get bigoted, you know, bigoted. He, why much I go fetch you water, you rebels? As if he's the one that's able to make water come out of the rock. And did the opposite of what God told him. And he ended up striking the rock again. With his disobedient rebel self. <laughs> Here's what happens, y'all. The Bible says, but the water still came out in abundance. Even in our disobedience, God still blesses. Even when we don't do what we know he told us to do. He caused water to come out because it wasn't about Moses. It was about his people. He says, my people thirsty. I got to still make sure my people get water. Water came out in abundance. And then he had a side talk with Moses. He said, come here, let me holler at you. <laughs> you, ever <got> them, <laughs> you ever got them calls at the office? <laughs> you shining in front of folk, then they get you. Hey, come on, holler at me. Let's just say talk to you. Here's the sad thing. You've led people to now get to a place where you're misleading people. He says, here's what's going to happen. He says, you're going to see it, but you won't go in. Oh, man. Could you imagine Building something, laboring, brick by brick. Oh, I was going to say something else, but I'm going to mess y'all up with that. I'm going to say it. <laughs> Have you ever been in a relationship and you downplayed it? You talked about how no good he was? 
We won't mount to nothing. <laughs> then a shift took place. God came into her life. God changed her. Changed that man. And now he's over in the Pamba Slang. And you looking. <laughs> but you can't partake no more. <laughs> and you, you fuss and you mad because you're trying to say you take credit. If it wasn't for me, now somebody. No, no. No, you had your chance. But you didn't believe based on what you saw at that moment. See, you didn't know God was a miracle worker. See, you counted her out. You counted him out. You thought they'd never change. You, you thought they were going to say the same knucklehead. <laughs> but now you talk, oh, he, just, he, oh, he ain't all that because I. <laughs> oh, he all that. Oh, she want to be. Yeah, she all that now. You can see it, but you can't partake of it. <laughs> That's how God is. It's something when your enemy have to see you bless. He said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. So y'all be tripping on, oh, folk hating on. I like when people hate. I don't waste my time talking about they hating. I say, keep on. Because God will prepare a table right in the presence of your enemies. He said, in other words, I'll let them see you blessed. I'll let them see you rolling because they thought you would never be riding. I know what I'm talking about. Watch this. But to build something and not be able to go in, that's tough. That's why it's important to walk in humility. Hear me, brothers and sisters. You are not what you think you are. We are not what we think we are. We are who we are, only by the, by the grace of God. You have what you have, only by the grace of God. You got a few nickels, only by the grace of God. And the moment you start thinking that you are more than what you really are, we're setting ourselves up for failure. And then we become a laughing stock. To, to see it and not go in it. That had to be hurtful. But when you don't believe, that's what we're saying. God said, it's going to happen. And you question it. And then it happens. And now you see somebody else walking in what he showed you. But because you didn't believe now you mad talking about they stole your idea. Now I steal nothing from you. <laughs> they was just willing to walk in what you was afraid to walk in. <laughs> Here it is. What's impossible with man is possible with God. Luke, Luke 18 and 27 says, but he said, these things that are impossible with people are possible with God. See, sometimes what happens is because of our failures and us missing it and we attempt to do stuff and if you don't succeed, we start taking that stuff as if it's not God. But some things God allow us to fail at so that we can learn from those things. Count it all joy when you find yourself in various trials and tribulations knowing this, James 1, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you be made perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Trying to teach your patience, but you're so eagerly to get there. And if you don't learn patience, you're going to repeat it. You don't learn patience, you're going to go through it until you learn it. And some of us have created a cycle of not learning. And we're constantly repeating the same stuff over and over again. And God is saying, it's about time. For you to come out of that. But it's not until we learn. Are you with me? Second thing, I want, third thing I want you to see is 
We got to die to have, die to have faith or die in doubt. Die to have faith or die in doubt. Verse 3 says, now there were four leper men at the entrance of the gate, and they said one to another, why are we sitting here until we die? Why are you constantly staying in the same state that you're in? You're not doing nothing, ain't nothing changing. You're the same place, doing the same stuff, and expecting a different result. Having a pity party about what's bad and what this is and this ain't right. But never look at yourself to say, what can I do to change this stuff? Boy, I say, man, if we sit here, we're going to die. We might as well. See, them type of brothers I like to roll with. You know what I'm talking about? See, even when I was in the world, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I, you can't be scary with me. Oh, I got a witness in the building. <laughs> oh, I got a couple of witnesses in the building. You can't be around me and not be willing to do. You know what I'm talking about. If you're scared, then you go home, man. If we set out to do something, we're going to carry it out. Now, if you're scared, you ain't got no business. <laughs> See, I'm talking about B.C. now. B.C. before Christ. But I still carry that mentality even in here. Because if of you with me, because you can have folk around you even save so-called folk. And saying they with you, but the moment you start stepping towards what you believe God is leading you to, you look around, you'll be by yourself. you be like, I thought they were with me. I thought we I never leave. Well, I'm telling you, I'm with you, pal. Whatever the Lord say, whatever he tell you, I'm, I'm with you. Look around, you be by yourself. Thank God that I don't depend on people. When you hear the voice of the Lord, you, he didn't tell you that it had anything to do with people. He just told you what to do. Are you with me? So this boy finds himself, now I'm in a position, if I stay here, I'm going to die. But I do know where there's food. So if I go there, at least they might capture me, but I'm going to eat. So I'm going to die of starvation and of leprosy. Or I'm going to take a chance of going in and eating and still have leprosy. <laughs> what are you saying, Pastor? All of us in here have some type of issue. But you can't let your issue stop you from eating. <laughs> That's why you're here now. You're eating the word. You're eating the word. Here's what I love about God. Whenever you step out on faith, see the stuff you was worried about, it ain't going to even happen. The Bible says, while they out here contemplating whether they should go in or out, God is working something out on the other end. Yeah. Amen. See, you tripping about trying to figure stuff out, and God already worked that thing out. All I need you to do is do what I told you to do. You up here trying to figure out, I don't need to know how it's going to happen. All I need to know is what he said. If he told me to do it, I'm going to do what he said and let him figure out how he's going to work it out. The Bible says they get there, and what they thought was going to be wasn't. They get there. Check it out what the Lord did. He calls a sound. He caused a sound, and the enemy thought that it was an army coming in after them, and they fled. They ran for their life and left everything there. Did you hear that? God got the enemy, has the enemy right now preparing some stuff that you ain't going to even have to work for. All you're going to have to do is walk in it. It's going to be there waiting for you. See, when you move in faith, God has blessings already. They call them blessing stations. You can pull up to the station, but you got to get there now. The Bible said they got there, and, and they looked for the enemy. There wasn't no enemy there. Nothing there but the spoil. They walked into a blessing. See, when you step out of your comfort zone, 
in your doubting and your unbelief, you'll walk into what God has already laid out for you. Blessings. You worrying about this and this right here. If I get there, like the children of Israel, God give them the land. This is your promised land. And there are giants in there. I didn't tell you you wasn't going to have to go through some stuff. But when you get there, I promise you what you went through to get there won't even mount anymore. They get there and they find out that there's more food than they can eat. And the people who used to talk about you ain't there no more. The people who you were afraid to go before, they done ran off and left. Here's the blessing. It's not only for you. God doesn't just bless you to be a bless, bless you to bless yourself. He blesses you to be a blessing to others. <laughs> I'm out of here. Watch this. So you have to learn, and I have to learn, that living is a part of sharing. Read that text. The Bible says the boys got in there, and they felt guilty. They said, man, we can't. Hold up. We eating good. People outside, they starving. And we where the food at now. But we were once where they were. <laughs> How soon we forget? These boys were just at the gate. I don't know if we're going to die here or we're going to die there. Now you get in your overflow. And you forget. Now you better than blessed. Filet mignon. <laughs> ain't no more spam. You know what I'm talking about. You ain't no spam now. Steak and potato. It ain't, it ain't Roman noodle, Raymond noodle, whatever they call them, noodles. <laughs> and now you eating good, but you forget about that it ain't always been this way. And the Bible says one of them came to them and said, you know what? Man, this ain't good. For us to be here eating while other folks are dying. See, that's when you have the love of God in your heart. You're not selfish. Some folk was, who they going to get their own? I ain't no living. <laughs> who they going to get it? How I got it. You ain't doing nothing but walk in it. You didn't do nothing. <laughs> See, whenever you share, God trusts you with more. <laughs> Boys walked into that thing, and then they said, man, I'm guilty. How many times has God blessed you and you felt guilty? Had opportunity to bless somebody and you didn't bless them. You threw it away rather than give it away. <laughs> Ouch! It was trash to you, but you know it can be treasure to somebody else. Some of y'all don't start me with y'all women, boy. 100, 150 pair of shoes. I didn't look at my wife. Why y'all looking at my wife? <laughs> y'all, that, not her. <laughs> we have so much, y'all, but we complain about what we don't have. We're so blessed. Some of us right now, we can start a boutique. <laughs> I'm trying to help us. Can start a straight up boutique. I like this. You ain't wore it in five years. <laughs> Somebody else would love that. They ain't wore it. It's in the back of the closet. You know how they do. I say, you know how they do. I, okay. <laughs> but I'm just showing us how blessed we are, but yet we still complain and say we don't have enough. When was the last time you shared your blessings with somebody? Just think about it, because we all can do more. We see people, and we can bless them, but we'd rather not. We'll talk about them before we bless them. Talk down on them, rather than bless them. Opening up your purse of blessing, your wallet of blessing, your closet, your house. 
I didn't say let them live there. Bring them in and feed them, you know, at least. It's just the little things that we can do that we don't take the opportunity to do. And God still blesses us. I don't know about you, but I want to be in a place where if I see something, I move quickly. Not second guessing. Anytime there's an opportunity to bless somebody, it's not nothing even second guess, truthfully. We try to make it the devil and oh no, it can't be God. Yes, it can be God telling you to help somebody. Matter of fact, it is God telling you to help. But if we're going to live this thing, we got to live it. Can't talk about it and not live it. Because there's an expectation for the believer. Not that pastor has an expectation, God has an expectation for all of us. If I've been good to you and if I've blessed you, you should be a blessing to somebody. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet. Touch your neighbor's shoulder. Father, thank you. You're a God of more than enough. God, you've blessed us beyond measures. You've done so much for us, but yet we still complain about what we don't have. God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that we begin to be grateful and thankful for all that you've done for us, God. Father, we may not have what we desire to eat, but you still feed us. Still make sure that we eat, God. I thank you for that, God. Father, I pray that our spirit has been quickened on today, that we will begin to look for opportunities to be a blessing, that we begin to look for opportunities to trust you more, God, to stretch ourselves and walk by faith and not by sight, knowing, God, that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ask or think. I thank you now for my brother and my sister whom I touch right now. God, I pray that through my touch that you will move and touch them now. Touch that situation. Touch that circumstance. Let them know, God, that this touch comes from you and that you are there. Hallelujah. Let them know that they're not alone, God. Let them know that you see everything that they've been praying about. You've heard every cry, and God, you will answer. I thank you now that their faith is being increased today. Some have been doing great things, God, and they're growing weary based on their own physical ability. God, I pray for strength now. Let them not grow weary in well-doing. Let them continue to keep their hands to the plow. And God, I know that you are God of more than enough. Overflow with love, God. Overflow with joy. Overflow with peace, oh God. God, give us more than we can handle so that we can be a blessing to others. Let your cup run over. Hallelujah. I thank you now, God, for being a God of more than enough. Yeah, God, it's more love than we can have, more love than we can handle. So we thank you, God, that you allow us the opportunity to even share your love with others. Thank you for your love. No greater love, Father. We thank you for Jesus. Even now, we make an appeal to three people. First, to that person that doesn't know him, haven't accepted him. You have an opportunity now to accept Jesus on today. Not man, but Jesus. Whether you're watching us online, whether you're in the building. The second appeal goes out to my brother and my sisters. You've drifted. You've strayed away. You used to be consistent, but you're inconsistent now. You were once committed, but now you lack commitment. That's not to degrade you or, or to down you, but the Bible calls you a backslider. I come to give you good news. God says, I'm married to the backslider. Hallelujah. That even when you try to separate yourself from me, my love would never separate from you. My sheep know my voice, and they will not adhere to another. So if you hear the voice of God calling you back today, son, daughter, 
come back home. Thirdly, every seed needs to be planted in the right soil. You can never reap a harvest if you're not planted in correct soil. And if God is bringing you, allowing you, or leading you to join Kingdom Life Church, to help partner with us, to help advance the kingdom, we make an appeal to you as well. So without any hesitation or reservation, if you fit one of those invitations, will you come today? The bride says come. The groom says come. Whosoever will, let him come. Today is your day. This is your date with destiny today. 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 Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More. More than anything. Come on, bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. And I just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. More. Hallelujah. Listen, watch this. The appeal was not just for them. They just obeyed. Whosoever will, let him come. That's what I love about God. Whosoever will, let him come. Today is your day. You have a date with destiny. Doesn't matter how you got here. You thought you was invited here, but God led you here. He knew you would be here today because it's about relationship. And that's what God desires, relationship. Yeah. He says, you've been out of relationship. You've been out of fellowship. You, you haven't communed with me in a while, and now it's time to come back. Not, not, you're not coming to this church. You don't have to join this ministry, but you need to rededicate, recommit yourself to God. That's important. I love you. Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want How many of you love him today? Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. More than anything. More than life. More than pleasures. More than people. I love you. I love you, Jesus. Yeah. I worship you. This is our last appeal. God, I love you. I love you more than anything. Yes, I yeah. do, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, can you bless God for our brother and sister? Bless you. Bless you. He says, listen, he said, not that I, I didn't only come to join. He said, but today my birthday. Can we say happy birthday to our brother? Here's what I want you to hear. Birthday means the birth of something new. Ah, yeah. So it's your real birthday. Yeah, for real, real. Yeah, yeah. Because God is about to birth something through you and in you because of your willingness to step out. You took a leap of faith today. God rewards faithfulness. He's a reward of those who diligently seek him. I applaud that today. Bless you, sister. How you been? You been fine? I'm glad you're here. I'm going to ask you all to repeat after me. Dear Lord God, today I'm your child. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that he died and you raised him from the dead I confess every sin, every shortcoming I repent come into my heart be Lord of my life today this day my life 
shall never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we bless God one more time? On behalf of my lovely wife, Lady Trinice, and the entire Kingdom Life family, we want to say welcome to the kingdom, but most importantly, welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. Be our special guest right here. We'll get some information from y'all at the end. Is that all right? All right, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Come on. Bless God for them. Amen. As always, I pray that something has been said, that your faith has been heightened, and your outlook bright. Amen. Amen. Listen, a couple of announcements. You can be seated, and we'll, we'll get you out of here. Uh, don't forget to join us this coming Wednesday, which is the last Wednesday of our summer youth session. So we're asking you to please allow your youth to come out. Man, it's been a good last few weeks. Amen? Yeah, we've enjoyed some things. Decision making. and uh, Went from pretty girls do yoga. And yeah. It's been, and, 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 and also, last week we had safety driving. Yeah. Talking to us about how we need to stop texting. and That wasn't just for the young folks. Yeah, how we need to stop being distracted while we're driving. There's so many distractions, people talking to you, you know, hollering at you while you're driving and all that good stuff, distractions. And then this week we're going to talk about our growing bodies, the changing of our children so they can understand their bodies are changing. Yeah, it's going through a metamorphosis. It's changing. And they're going to help you understand why those changes, they are supposed to take place. Amen. And so bring your children out. We've been having a great turnout. And so this is the last one. We want to make sure this one exceeds the rest of them. Amen? Amen. Also, uh, on next Sunday is our fifth Sunday, which would be our youth Sunday. And so we're going to have a youth uh, minister coming on next week. We're going to celebrate our youth on next week. And then also we're going to have our back-to-school giveaway Yeah, on next week. So we thank God for all of you. Thank God for your generosity. We have over 200 uh, back sacks and supplies already in them that we're going to give out on next week. So we appreciate y'all. We couldn't do what we do if you didn't give how you give. Everything that you do makes it easy to do what we do as a ministry. So we appreciate it. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much. So we partnered with our Tri uh, Parish, the Deltas, right? Yeah, so we partnered with them. They're going to come in. We're going to have certain other uh, health um, uh, servants or services that will be available on next week as well. We're going to have food and, and uh, hot dog, hamburgers, and somebody was trying to get all some other stuff, but we're going to, so we want five course meals, you know what I'm talking about? So we're going to have some, uh, what, what, the, what, Mavericks? Italian ice, they're going to be there. We have a little, uh, a little wet station with the little bouncy things with the water slides and all that, so Gonna make it make it a big event. So we want our kids to come out. You know some kids in the community. It's for the community. Amen. Amen. So it's not just for us. So but we want our kids if they need to get definitely, it starts at home. So if they if they need to be blessed, we want them to receive, but it's also for the community. And we appreciate y'all. Also, uh, it's the last Sunday. And then we go into our new home. Yeah. It's the last Sunday. Am I the only one excited? Y'all acting so funny. So we're excited about that. First Sunday of next month, man. God has been good to us. We will be at Kingdom Life Church 2360 in Lafayette Lane. And we're excited about it, man. God has been so good. He's been faithful. He don't have to do what he's been doing, but he's sure been faithful. They say we wouldn't be here. Said we was a fly by night ministry. Yeah. That, oh, that's another church coming. Oh, they ain't gonna last long. But God. Yeah. Whenever God's hand is in it, can't nothing stop it. Amen. And that's one thing I always said. If we were to leave this community, would the community miss us? Why? Because we're in this community to make an impact there's any church that's in the community and they leave and the community doesn't miss them, then they didn't make a difference. Amen. First thing the mayor asked me, y'all leaving us? I said, no way. We're just taking, going to a new residence. But we're going to forever serve this city and the surrounding areas. Amen. So Lafayette Lane, here we come. Yeah. So next month, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to call it uh, Kingdom Manifestation. 
So on different Sundays, we're going to have, I'll speak the first Sunday. We're going to have guests on the second, third, and then our very own, my pastor, Pastor Danny M. Donaldson Sr. is going to come through fourth Sunday for our dedication service. Yeah, dedication service. Now, I, I, we're going to do the dedication service a little later. All right? We're going to do it at 12. At 12. Just for that Sunday. Amen. So, so all the rest of the sun is 10. But then four sun, 12. All right. And then that following month, we're going back to where we were. 10, 10, 10. Amen. Yeah, we're just doing this for something special, special occasion. So we're going to do 12. Why? Because I had so many people say, we want to come celebrate with you all. But the times kind of conflict with our service. I said, well, we changed that. Yeah, we, we, we changed that because we, we, want, we want you to come celebrate with us. Amen. Yeah. I love y'all so much. I can't wait to share so much with y'all. My journal, just for y'all to hear what God was saying through the midst of all this stuff. I'm writing and believing when it didn't look like it was going to happen. Though it tarry, wait for it. It shall speak and not lie. The vision is yet for an etern- appointed time. And it's God's appointed time for Kingdom Life Church. Can you bless God one more time? I don't know about y'all, but there's a shift that has taken place. There's a shift that has taken place. And it's important that you get on board. We won't leave you behind, but you got to get on board. Amen. Learn how to flow. When God is flowing, when he's moving, you got to learn how to get in. Because he's not obligated to do it again. All right? Come on, rest on your feet. We love y'all. Hey, sexy girl. (laughs) Y'all bless God for my beautiful one. Might take you out to dinner looking like that, girl. (laughs) Amen. God, we bless you. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. God, we thank you for faith, to have faith in this dying world. We trust you no matter what we see. God, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. As we leave this place, but never your presence, give us traveling grace until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hold up before you leave. Hold up. Hold up one minute.